Okay, so a running red lights, a random digit dialing telephone survey of 880 drivers asked, recalling the last 10 traffic lights you drove through, how many of them were red when you entered the intersection? Of the 880 respondents, 171 admitted that at least one light had been red. So part A, construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the population proportion. Okay, so um, we're gonna break this up into our four step process where we have state, plan, do, conclude. So first we're gonna state what we're trying to figure out in terms of, of our parameter and our confidence level. So we are trying to estimate the true proportion P of all the drivers who ran at least one red light in the last 10 intersections that they drove through. And then we just make sure add, which I forgot to write, with 95% confidence. All right, next part, we, we write down our plan. And our plan is we're going to use a one sample Z interval to estimate P as long as the conditions are met. So we will construct a one sample Z interval for P if the conditions are met. Next, we check the conditions. And the conditions, recall, are the random 10% and the large counts condition. So the random condition, we go ahead and look at our problem and let's see that it does say random, that random digit dialing telephone survey. So the random condition is met. 10% means that we basically are saying that 880 is no more than 10% of all the drivers in the population. So 880 times 10 is 8,800. So we can say that there's at least 8,800 drivers in the population which is fair, which is true. So we can say that is met. And then um, the large counts, it's, you, can, you can do um, P hat times N and N times one minus P hat is at least 10, but it's also known as the number of successes and failures. So what that means is um, we look at basically the counts. So the number of successes is 171. So that's at least 10. And the number of failures are just what's remaining from that. So if we take 880 and take away 171, that'll leave us with 709. And then so both of those are at least 10, so that is a mess. And so here it is. Here, here they are formally. So the random 10% and the large counts condition. Okay, now then now we go ahead and make our confidence interval constructed. So we're going to use the formula, the p hat, or plus minus our z star times the square root of p hat times one minus p hat over n as our as our formula for the confidence interval. So our p hat. That'll be 171 divided by 880. So about 0.1943. Our Z star, we're trying to construct a 95% confidence interval. So we look for the critical value where there's two and a half percent to each side of it. So we can just go to our, our function inverse norm 0.025 and that'll be 1.96 so we'll have 1.96 of their z star and then we have again our population proportion which is 171 divided by 880 and then we do one minus that so one minus the 0.1943 and the rest is just algebra. The n is going to be our, you know, 880. So it comes out to this. 0.1943 times 0.857 over 880. And if you're um, 
little worried about getting your algebra right, I would calculate this first and then work my way outside. So I would do 0.1943 times 0 0.8057, then divide by 880, then take the square root of this number, which is the same as raising it to the 0.5 power. That'll give me my value of the square root. And then I multiply this by 1.96. That'll give me my margin of errors of 0 0.026 for that whole thing. So I will then end up adding 0 0.0261 to 19, the 0.1943. So adding this and subtracting 0.43. 19, 19, 4, minus and those, those will give me my lower and upper bounds of my confidence interval. Okay, and now we just um conclude the problem, right? The what right what we right what we what we figured out in context. So we can essentially say that we are 95% confident that this interval captures the true population proportion p of drivers that have ran at least one red light in the last 10 times that they've gone through an intersection and there it is now let's follow up on part b so non-response is a practical problem for this survey. Only 21.6% of calls that reached a live person were completed. Another practical problem is that people may not give truthful answers. So what is the likely direction of the bias? So in other words, do you think that more or fewer than 171 out of these 880 people really ran a red light and why? And are these sources of bias included in the margin of error? So essentially it's saying like, like, do we think this 171 is the truth? Like, like is this the actual amount of those 880 that actually ran one red light or more? And when you think about it, it's probably gonna be less because people are probably more likely to lie about this. People don't wanna admit that they ran a red light because you know, they're gonna have to you know pay a ticket or whatever. They're worried about getting in trouble or anything. So even though some did admit the true value maybe higher, maybe, maybe larger than that. And um, unfortunately, the techniques we use for these confidence intervals um, don't take care of this type of bias. It's not going to take care of response bias. It'll simply just take care of, of sampling variability. And so there's my, whoops, there's my answer written out.